Shakat Mosulmane. If the name rings a bell, it is because it is this man. This man who is a member of the Upper House in New South Wales. He's a man who we've spent some time talking about in the past because he was a man who openly praised China in its response to the coronavirus pandemic. Now, of course, if you believe China, everything was terrible until about February and then it just stopped. No massive jump in cases, no massive jump in deaths. Apparently, it all just went up and stopped. Rubbish. Of course, as you know, because it got out of control in China, they held back their domestic flights because they didn't want to get it to Beijing, but they were more than happy for the flights to go to Brisbane, to go to Boston, to go to Birmingham, to go anywhere else around the world, and did so for many weeks. And we are now at the stage where... 10 million people around the world have got coronavirus. About 400, almost 500,000 people have died. And here in Australia, our economy has been, of course, completely torched. So that is where you've heard the name Shakat Mosselman before. But you might have also noticed that this member of the upper house, who only had to pay for the words of the past by resigning his deputy presidency of the upper house, I mean, what an important gig, he still stayed in the parliament. Well, that might be changing in the next little while, but it won't be immediate because there was a raid by ASIO on his office and his home in the past few days. Danica De Giorgio with some details there. Just two days after allegations of foreign interference emerged against New South Wales Labor MP Shaquette Mosselman, the state branch is taking a stand. Leader Jody McKay confirming the party will move to suspend him from New South Wales Parliament. I make the decision I do today based on information I have at this particular point in time. Do not underestimate the significance of this issue or how much weight I give this issue. Mr Mosselmain's home and office were raided by federal agents on Friday investigating allegations of Chinese influence. ASIO is looking at whether Chinese Communist Party agents attempted to infiltrate the New South Wales Parliament through the office of the Labor backbencher. OK, so let's be very clear. I don't know exactly whether the investigation is into the MP or the people in the MP's office. Much of the reporting that we have got is fairly murky around all of this, as you would expect. But there is one thing worth pointing out here, which is the Labor Party's leader's position in New South Wales. Now, originally, when this investigation first started, the New South Wales government, the Liberal Party, said that they were going to move a motion in the Upper House to have him suspended. You can't boot him out of the Parliament because he hasn't been either charged or found convicted of any sort of crime of longer than two years' imprisonment. So the best they can do is essentially bar him from being able to physically enter the chamber. But Jody Mackay, who is the Labor leader, who did not sack this bloke, did not suspend this bloke out of the parliament when he backed China and its response to coronavirus, she says, well, no, trust me, I'm in charge now. We'll actually seek his support to do that. Uh, but if he challenges that, if he refuses to support that, then we will seek the support of the government uh, and the crossbench to uh, ensure that he is suspended from the Legislative Council. What that means is that when the Legislative Council uh, resumes uh, during that first week of August, uh, Mr Mosselman will not be a member of the Labor Party and Mr Mosselman will not be allowed to enter the Legislative Council chamber. He also will not sit on any parliamentary committees. Ooh, August. They can't do anything about this until August. She also said today that this shouldn't be something that's done by the government. This should be something that she's led by her because this is a Labor issue. Rubbish. It's a national security issue. We understand that the law that is being dealt with in here is foreign interference laws which were only recently passed by the federal government. So the Prime Minister was very clear, this is not Liberal Labor, it's not New South Wales, it is a federal national security issue. I think the actions of uh, the Australian Federal Police and, and ASIO uh, demonstrate that the threats in this area are real, the need to take action is necessary and the government is absolutely determined to ensure that nobody interferes with Australia's activities. 
Now, clearly, something was bubbling along for the past couple of weeks because 60 Minutes had the video footage of his home being raided. They aired that this evening. They also aired this exchange with a national security expert about potentially one of the people who might be the focus of this. If not the MP, then perhaps one of his staffers who has, well, quite a few links back to China. What would be the point in recruiting or targeting somebody like him? There's a lot of value you can get from simply being inside, uh, you know, a, a legislative body, knowing the people there. It gives intelligence agencies incredible opportunities for further targeting and recruitment and intelligence gathering. He may well say he was simply a true believer in the ideals promoted by the Chinese Communist Party. Is that fair enough? It'd be pretty unusual. I think it's rare for the Chinese Communist Party to genuinely win over people through their ideology. It often operates by coercion or inducement. Now, Mosulmane is a person whose political career was as early as the 80s and 90s as a local councillor in the area of Rockdale in Sydney. But since becoming a state MP, he's been to China, apparently, according to 60 Minutes Tonight, some 10 times. Who pays for those trips? Well, that's part of the conversation that needs to happen. Who is the staffer? Why was this the most qualified person to be in the office? And is there any correlation between the people that you have in your office and the things that you say publicly? That's what the investigation will be. I repeat and I state very clearly that we don't know if it is the MP or if it is the staffers that are the focus, but it was the MP's home that has been raided by ASIO. And for State Labor to try to turn around and pretend, oh, no, we're on top of this now, we're going to be the ones that are going to cull this bloke, where were you when he praised China for its response to coronavirus? Why was he allowed to remain as a member of the ALP? Now, no doubt, Albo will, of course, be the most clueless person to lead the Labor Party who's never met any MP who ever gets themselves into trouble like the ones in Victoria or the one in New South Wales. Jodie Mackay will say, well, it's only when ASIO raid your house that will take actions on you. We will question your loyalties about whether you are fit enough to be in the party or not. This story has a long way to run. We'll talk about it every night because the influence of China matters. Because as we have shown, be it the World Health Organization, the United Nations Human Rights Organizations, be it the Belt and Road Initiative, once China gets its hooks into you, what you do, as you've seen with the Australian universities, is you never call them out. You never call them out on anything they ever do. You never say anything when they are caught red-handed doing exactly the wrong thing. You never call them out when their mishandling of the virus goes around the globe. Instead, you have two options. Shut up or praise them. This is a danger. Now, of course, Australia will continue to be punished by China because, unlike this MP, we decided to say, no, there should be an inquiry into this. But remember, it was only last week on this channel when Charry Markson broke the story that a think tank that was defunded by the federal government because of its potential connections to China was addressing the shadow cabinet of Anthony Albanese. Where the key message was, don't say much. Because managing the relationship is more important than standing up for our national interests. Watch this space.